What's up, y'all? You're listening to Husker Hop Radio. Listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And if you're looking for more fun, head on over to Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter and follow us at Husker Hop Radio. Oh, my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode number 27 of the Husker Hype Radio podcast. I'm Eddie Rosenthal. That's Aaron Warsfold. And folks, for the second week in a row, we have a guest joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Husker Hype Radio podcast, Jaden Sidwell. <laughs> Jaden, how's it feel to be on, bud? I mean, go ahead, speak for yourself. It feels glorious. It's been a, you know, a long time coming. It feels glorious. I mean, I guess it's not in the best circumstances, though. You know, it always would have been better to have Jay Sid on the pod after a W. However, that didn't happen this week. As we all know, folks, Nebraska. And I, lost. I do have a quick question for Jaden. Um, the haters, the haters are saying it's your fault. You were in the Husker hype radio broadcast this week. Haters are saying it's your fault. We lost. What do you have to say to them, Jaden? Yeah. What the fuck? I feel like it has a lot to do with E rock. He doesn't like me for that reason, but I mean, can you really put it all on one guy? No, you can't. No, that's, you cannot. That's absolutely true, man. And yeah, there was a little bit of bickering in the comment section this stream. E Rock saying, "Get fucking white hoodie off of this stream right the fuck now." I was, I was a little dumb, shooken by by the comment. I don't know what it was all about, but I think tensions are just high, dude. Nebraska is not performing to where we want them to be, and and E Rock's just trying to lash out on something. And I think that we we apologize and you know, forgive E-Rock. Yeah. Yeah, E-Rock, it's all right. It's all right, bud. It's all right. We all got a little salty during that. And and like you said, Ed, this is, the tensions are high. It's following a loss, 20 to 17 versus Michigan State. I I wrote down the predictions. E-Rock said 37-3, Ed 24-0, Aaron 27-10. Didn't turn out how we wanted, boys. What, What are your initial takeaways? I mean, man, let's, let's just start by saying that yeah the referees didn't do us justice but at the end of the day it's nebraska versus michigan state and michigan state beat nebraska they played a better football game than us i mean passing in both um on both sides of the ball they beat us in the offensive passing and our pass defense got destroyed um i mean it just it just wasn't a pretty game, man. I feel like the defense wasn't really themselves. Offense, tr- uh, just having trouble finding a spark. Um, yeah, Aaron, well, Jay- what do you think? Uh, I think you're right, Ed. I mean, especially the second half, we come out, punt, 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 interception, touchdown, fumble in the game. I mean, when you have a second half like that, there's no, there's no momentum. There's really nothing else to say. I think you hit the nail on the head. What do you think, Jaden? Yeah, hit the nail on the head, agree. But I do have one thing to say about the refs a little bit. A little salty. Can Can I say one more thing before we get to the refs? I Uh, think yes, because I have to say some shit too. Talk about this third this third thing, which is the refs in this game. Um, Michigan State came out. They wanted to play football more than us, more than we did th- this game. You know what? And we, I, we heard Quentin Newsom and Tommy Hill go, "Yeah, we're really playing elite defense right now." And when you say comments like that, and then you kind of, you know, get a little bit of swagger that might be false. Um, I think that's what happened. These guys came out. They said it's two and six, Michigan State. Mm-hmm. We're the better football team. But Matt Rule said it in the early in the year. Any team that we play in these next games can beat us, and Michigan State proved that. It doesn't matter if they're two and six. Probably the most easily easily winnable game on paper for the rest of the season, and we lost. Oh yeah, it for sure was. I mean, if we don't make the mistakes, don't three turnovers compared to zero. I mean, there are so many things that could have gone better for us. Um, Dot the eyes, crossing the (sighs) t's. Jaden, what do you think, bud? It was tough seeing those interceptions kept coming back and forth, dude. It was so one of the interception was kind of like a punt. It was like a third and something, and he hauled heaved it down. I think they downed it at like the seven yard line. So that one you can't be like super pissed about. But I think if you gotta you be watch more... that replay, dude. 
if he throws it correctly to Alex, that's a yes. touchdown, dude. Yes, like, Alex is open on the side of the field in the left corner running like a post of sorts or go, and Buddy throws it to the middle of the field right into the defender's hands. Right, right. So, I mean, it's it's a punt, but also a missed opportunity for a score on our first offensive possession, you know, or one yeah. of the first offensive possessions. Um, And then, yeah, well, that, that was second, our second. That, that was our second. Yeah. Um, so, as as far as the, I mean, we I I gotta just say the th- the 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 refs, man, the face mask on Harburg, bullshit. That touchdown pass that they caught, not a catch, bullshit. That's three right there for them. We we stopped them right there. Uh, the fumble at the end of the game where his hand was moving forward should have been an incomplete pass. The clock stops in that scenario, and we're not hustling to the ball and making. I don't know. We're not being crazy. The the no pass interference call on Malachi Coleman. I, you know the one I'm talking about when he's running running down the field. It's that yeah. play we love where they're trying to get the touchdown and he gets laid out over the middle. It's on our it's on our TikTok. Go follow. And then I I included a picture in the doc Ed. For 39 seconds left in the game, Malachi Coleman catches a first down. They call it short second and one. The clock runs. If we get that. Clock stopped again right there. That's precious time. Precious, precious time. Mm-hmm. Exactly, man. And Jaden, you wanted to start talking about the refs. Is there's one thing in Pacific or did Aaron just hit all of it? It kind of just hit all of it. But yeah, you know, that face mask was one that really stood out. I was like, how do you not call that face mask? Well, and and Matt Rule, he says, you know, he had a press conference today. He said. We had, and we quoted this on Twitter as well, we had one game where the team scouted us. We had two games where the replay was wrong. And that first comment, the team scouted us. I mean, buddy, we would have lost that game anyways. I feel like 45 to 7, that doesn't mm-hmm. have anything to do with scouting. Let's be let's be honest here. A little bit of a escape from our I didn't like that quote. But we had two games where the replay was wrong. And in a rebuilding year, in a year where Nebraska has only won four games in the past however many years, I, a good football team, yeah, they don't need refs to save the game for them. But this football team, whether we like it or not right now and where we're at, we do, dude. You know? Yeah. Like, it's a big help. And that's not where we want to be in the future. But for this season specifically, those calls make – put two losses – on the, yeah, on I mean, the schedule seven and two sounds a whole lot better than five and four boys, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does, bud. I mean, granted, we should be scoring more than fucking 17 points against Michigan State and more than 10 points against Minnesota. But that's what I'm saying. This in yeah. this year, like, right, we, we can't. These calls are very important. <laughs> And, and another thing, we're not kicking just to teams keep going ass, about yeah. Coach Rule's press conference. And I was thinking about this today, too. We actually really do have a super young team now, especially on offense. So it makes sense. They didn't really play a whole lot of ball together in the spring and the summer and, and now. And a lot of them didn't even play last year at all. A lot of them are freshmen. Uh, right. So that that sucks a lot. And it, and it makes you wonder, like, how, how can we just make it – I don't want to say as simple as possible, but how do we allow the men on the field to make the plays and to and – to, just really execute and and the X's and O's of all the shit. Go go out there, have fun, simplify it a little more is what you think. Yeah, exactly. Especially on the offensive side of the ball. The defense is the defense. I feel like at this point, like they are who they are. They're going to stop the run and then they're going to get, I don't want to say gashed by passes, but for lack of better terms, that's what I'll use. Um, But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the, it is nice that all these guys are young. I mean, you know, our leading receivers are Fedoni, Malachi Coleman, and, and Emmett Johnson. And the, I, Emmett Johnson, granted, only had one catch, but Alex Bullock, too, another young guy. And I think that it's good that these young people are making plays and doing it. Um, but it's also – I don't know if it's more about simplicity, Aaron. I think it's just about executing and then being young and keep on playing games and, and getting better as a team throughout the season i guess what i mean by like by like making it simple is just like we have a bad passer why are we putting the ball in his hands all the time to like 
create certain RPOs to make decisions against defenses that he doesn't really like know certain about. I guess we're putting like a lot of the shit into his hands, to, which is to your point, Ed, like our our players need to, you know, execute that stuff. But when you're talking about a sophomore quarterback, that it's just not in his bag. That's like right. me going over to you and being like, "Hey, buddy, go shoot this archery thing without a fucking arrow," you know, kind of deal. Yeah, I understand. I know what you're. I know what you're coming from. I you you tweeted something today in response to a guy and I didn't really understand it. And I think it kind of goes along with what we're talking about here. Uh, we're talking about Shubba Purdy and Matt rule said in the press conference gave no thoughts on to putting a new quarterback into the game versus Michigan state, which was very interesting. 12 for 28. Mm-hmm. I mean, Buddy, he either throws the ball right on the money, but more uh, more times than not, it's a fucking shit throw, or he can't see the open receiver on a pass play. Twelve for twenty eight. Um, if Purdy's a hundred percent and ready to go, why isn't he playing? And Aaron, you said the issue with starting Purdy is that we've put all of our eggs in the run game. I don't think our play calling would be good enough to make a big difference in the pass game. Like, can you just? W- I want to know what what you're talking about here. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Like our identity, our identity on offense is. I guess. Are, are you or saying what? that Chuba can't run the football? I don't think that he can run the football like Harburg. No, I mean, but he's I mean, also that- injury prone right now. Uh, he hasn't really shown like a lot of great ability to do that in the past. He hasn't shown anything so far this season. Right. But I guess we also don't see what's going on in practice. Like if, if Harbor, okay. So blank slates, better runner and our whole thing's running the ball. And then he's, I don't know what percent do you want to put on throwing? He's like a 30% quarterback right now compared to Chubba, who's maybe like a 60% like throwing the ball compared to like a 20% running the ball. Well, I feel like Harburg has a pretty, when Harburg's confident and run the ball hard, he's a great yeah. runner. What did he have this game? This game, he had he did fourteen carries for carries 31, for 31 yards. yards, and 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 to be honest, Eddie, sacked seven times, so that's a lot of negative yards for his rushing. He had two big scrambles, which were probably for about forty plus each. So to see him only have thirty one rush yards, that's pretty sad. Yeah, I and, really and, think that they won up front on defense against their offense. Definitely up front. We there was a couple of plays where he should have. He should have stayed in the pocket for a couple, but then maybe he was just so used to running out and being pressured this game that he did it in times that he mm-hmm. shouldn't have. Um, but he had to run out a lot, man. Yeah. And another thing Coach Rule said is, is it's tough for the quarterback because he's the guy that everybody sees. He's got the spotlight on him. But, like, you don't see the offensive line during the plays. When I'm watching the, the game – on television, I can't see what the receivers are doing on the field. Who's open? How long does it take them for to release or get separation? Yeah, that that all matters. I have a question for Jaden. Jaden, what what do you think about the quarterback play? What Coach Rule had to say? Give me your thoughts. I I'm with Eddie. I kind of would like to see Sheba go in there a or little bit. Just like I want the spark on offense, man. If I gonna, want the spark. If we're gonna pass the ball. Let's see what Chubba can do, but yeah. I don't think we're going to pass the ball though. And I do like I do get what you're saying about creating a spark. At this point, though, what was that game? We're we're five and four. That was game nine. We got two games left, three mm-hmm. games left. So it's like, are we going to really for a dude that just became 100 percent healthy in week ten? We're going right. to throw in there and and expect to have him. Right. Can he be that much better than Harbaugh yeah, when he hasn't like, played he, a snap right. in a real game yet? Right. That's my thought, I guess, more or less. Yeah, that. That, that, that adds a lot that, to it. That makes a lot of sense. But also, why are we pa- why did we pass the ball 28 times, dude? See, why, has like, to, I, I think that has to do with last the RPO. Game. Brother, I said this last game, remember? I go, or mm-hmm. last podcast. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't give a damn if we run the ball 60 fucking times mm-hmm. and pass for two. And I, I mean – our run blocking on is way better than our pass blocking. We had 41 team carries for 148 yards, 3.6 yard average. Not the best, but not horrible. I think that there could have been a couple other times where we run the football rather than fucking pass. 28 
passing attempts, dude. I don't I don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. And that's just another thing where it's that's got to be part of play calling, though, man. Like that, if that's what we're if we're if we're designing plays and having twenty eight passes for a guy that can't complete half of them, QBR thirty nine, two interceptions. Right. They they had a true. I don't know if it's true freshman, but he was a freshman starting. He went thirteen for twenty, one hundred sixty five yards. Former Nebraska also had a touchdown, or excuse me, a pass attempt. Alante Brown, he had a 42 yarder. Dude, that just makes it sting for some reason really, really bad that Alante Brown is was the guy for that. Alante Brown. That wasn't the catch where it was the, the not catch, right? That was a different touchdown. Yeah, that was or the actual did, touchdown. Didn't make by a touchdown. His... Marquis nope. Spuford or he, he got made the it. tackle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that was also his fault that it even happened. And um, but mm-hmm. yeah, dude. Oh, can I, we just go back to that replay again where um, you're telling me that like a referee watches that and sees the ball like literally like what mush against the ground onto the ground and how like how do you watch that and go that's a catch? Yeah, I've never seen anything like that be called before. Yeah, because you you were almost Steve relieved. Landino. Was wrong. Even yeah, oh. even Dean Blandino, our boy over in LA, were by you guys. Don't yeah. go against the Dean, brother. What are they doing? Yeah, don't uh, go against yeah. the Dean, man. That's just whatever. Oh, uh, rushing. You already said how much we ran up for 148 yards. Emmett Johnson, man, that guy runs fast. 13 carries, 57 yards. He almost busted a couple too. North South kid, North South type ball runner, dude. You love it. Um, I think that's enough of the offense, man. It, it it just just kind of not together. They weren't they weren't a unit. It seemed like this game. Is, I wish I want I want more from Fedoni. Or... That's that's the only other thing I'll say is like I mean we throw the ball twenty eight times and he gets three receptions. What what the fuck's that? He's yeah. the oldest guy in the team right now. He's gonna be our main option, and he's getting three receptions. I don't know how many targets he dropped a couple and whatever. But all right, the De- defense. Defense, man. <laughs> Defense not there again this week either. I mean, we had um just the past defense looked bad. Tommy Hill really needed to figure it out, was getting beat on a lot of plays. Um Malcolm Hartsaw, Quentin Newsom had some uh, just all of our cornerbacks didn't look the way that they usually look. Uh-huh. And What's the what's with the past two weeks us not getting pressure on the quarterback? We we were leading the nation in sacks, and I don't remember how many sacks we got last game, but this game only three. I think we had less than three last game. I just feel like the pressure's not there anymore. Yeah, I agree. At one point, I felt like we were always getting back there, and now we're now we're not. Although Cameron Lenhart, man, that guy's a dog. He he does seem to be breaking up a lot of plays. Even some things don't show up on the stat sheet, and he's one of those guys that just wrecks a lot of stuff. Him and Nash. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, run defense still spectacular, but pass defense and getting to the quarterback during pass plays yep. is just not not where it needs to be. We had three sacks, seven tackles for loss. They had seven sacks, twelve tackles for loss. How do you feel about um, being a home What's team the- versus an away team? I mean, like, you think there's a factor in the being away? their stadium was less than half full. Yeah, it's senior day. Yeah, it's an away game, but like, it's a new, it's a what was it, 11 o'clock game in the morning and nobody's there. Yeah. Or it's not like they're, it's like a super big home field advantage at that point. Me and Jaden were talking about that though a little bit. Where I mean, even when they played against Illinois, they, they only wait, what was the score against Illinois? Was it? Seven to twenty. Seven to twenty. Yep. Yeah, seven to twenty. So that wasn't too bad of a game, I guess, at home. But dude, I just don't know if the fellows were woken up for this game or like. You I can think do the difference the... for me between the Illinois game and this game is that I feel like you see the defense flying around with that reckless abandon they talk about. You know, when you're really not caring much, you're just playing for the boys. You're playing for the next play and. This game, it seemed everybody was kind of playing scared. 
Well, it was, the, it was the first drive, man. I mean, the first drive against Illinois, we stopped them on the one inch line. And then this, this game, they go down and make a big play, get a field goal on their first drive. And now, even though you're not, it almost feels like maybe you're playing to not lose. You're not playing to win is what Matt Rule says a lot. Those guys, it almost seemed like they were playing to, to not lose, you know? Yeah. For, for most of the game. They they um, out they yarded us two ninety five to two seventy seven. We had three turnovers. We had the ball more thirty one minutes thirty one seconds nineteen first downs compared to eleven. We had the advantage there. Yeah, I I mean Michigan State made big plays, and Nebraska did not. And that's another thing that rule said in the press conference. Um, he said that if. If you know you want to win, you either have to make big plays or convert on third down. Uh huh. Nebraska did neither of those. I mean, Michigan State didn't convert on third down. Worse than us, three for fourteen. We were five for fifteen, but they made big plays, and we had maybe one. Heiner Carberg broke one loose late. Yeah, but that was about it. I like how they. they I mean. They they played the win, man. They pulled all the fucking tricks out the bag. Three trick plays, I think it was, and mm-hmm. a lot of them were for for either touchdowns or big plays. Yeah, Jaden defense. Uh, well, our defense is it's been, it's been pretty good all year. Yeah, but yeah, it was a little lackey this time. I did like Lemon Hart though. That sack it was a good. It was a good sack. Yeah, it's kind of a tough game when you just like have nothing really like super in depth to talk about, you know, it's a lot, a lot more fun after wins. Right boys. And then, and then, yeah. And at half, I, or at around the fourth quarter, I started drinking pretty heavy. I'm um, trying to get the pain away. Yeah. So, um, I mean, when you're 10, 10 going into half and we get the ball coming out of half, I was confident. I was like, all right, dude, first half coach is going to go in there and dial some shit up and we're good boys. Yeah. And dude, I'm surprised he made that 51 yard field goal, dude. That was a tough field goal, and he fucking drilled that thing. That kind of pissed me off, also. And that was another thing coach talked about for for Alvana too at the end of the game because we only needed like 15 more yards to get in field goal territory at the end. Yep. Of like it wasn't yep. like we were not nowhere in the realm of making it happen. Right. Right. And then what it was the the incomplete pass that was called a fumble and the Malachi Coleman. Those were both in the last drive, correct? Yep. Yeah. So I mean if we if we uh, not the Malachi to... Coleman PI, that was in the third. No, not the last. PI. When yeah, he yeah. caught it. Yeah. When yep, he yep. caught it Just up. Just wanted to make down. that clear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So all right. Well, we lost like, any other things you want well, to add? We lost takeaways. That suck. Uh, I mean, 17 to 20. It's even worse. I mean, when you when Wisconsin lost, Minnesota lost, Iowa wins by three. They're at the top of the Big Ten West. It just our our season would just look a lot different if we just didn't uh, kick ourselves in the ass sometimes, boys. Hey, but you know what? Iowa and Wisconsin losing still makes us control our own destiny, bud. We still control our own destiny. If we win out, we make it to the Big Ten championship. <laughs> Before we move on to Maryland, because I got some takes on Maryland. Has anybody got anything else to add on the Big Ten or anything else right now? Uh-uh. You go, baby. Okay. Right. Dude, I'm I'm scared about Maryland, man. I'm scared about Maryland. I've said this every week. Northwestern's here. Purdue was a better version of Northwestern. And then now Maryland's the best. Or the Michigan State was a little bit better than Purdue. I think Michigan State's actually a damn good ball team. And then I think. Maryland's the best out of these four that we faced in a row. And their pass offense is fucking amazing. What did we just talk about this whole Michigan State game for Nebraska's defense? Our pass defense sucked. Yep. What would you want to know? What do you think about that? I mean, yeah, Michigan State, uh, second in Big Ten pass yards a game, probably trailing only who? Ohio State? Yep. My guess. Maryland. So, is what you meant to... Yeah, Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. Yeah. Um, that's 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 tough, bud. That's uh that's something to look at there. And I don't know, they beat Michigan State early in the season 31 to 9. They've lost their last four, lost to Northwestern, lost to Illinois, two teams that we've beat. But dude, they're gonna they're gonna like 
this part of the season is very this game's very important to them just as it is for us man mm-hmm. and I think they want to make a come ball game pace, too especially coming off their penn state loss like you just said four in a row loss like they're not going to come over here and fucking be they're gonna be salty i guess is what i'm trying to say it's not gonna be easy and i'm i'm very glad that it's at nebraska i'll say that i think that yeah. that's gonna help us out a lot yeah, like you said, they're averaging 280 passing. They're averaging 30.7 points a game. That's fourth in the Big Ten. We're we're, we're going to need to hold them under like three touchdowns if that's possible. I think we need it because, I mean, we're not going to score over 30. Right. Granted, they, they allow 23.8 points a game, but I, given our offense, we all know how that's been going, boys. Right, dude. They're, what, their defense – they allow they they do allow a lot of pass yards a game, but six in the Big Ten with the rush yards that's that's not horrible. That's pretty good. Hey, but we're first in the Big Ten at rushing, so if we can fucking smack these boys in the mouth, it's like we say every week, Ed. Line up. They know what we're gonna do, and we can still do it, boys. Yep, run the damn ball Hell sixty yeah. fucking times, dude. Give me Heiner Carbark one for one on passing, and give me fucking seventy five fucking rushing attempts for four billion yards okay it's gonna be a cold game bro this is a finesse team if we go in there and smack them in the mouth put them on their that's ass at the too, start man. set the that's tone be that'll, be, that'll be great that'll be great yep motherfucker's hands gonna get cold he he, he hasn't w- experienced that nebraska fucking i hope it's a windy one so he gets yeah. that old fucking nebraska neck wind world Oh, bro! If it's, your if it's windy small. and they can't and they can't throw the ball because you know how that wind swirls in Memorial Stadium down there. If you, if it's windy day, that'll be huge. I'm gonna be there freezing my ass off. I hope. So, Tulia Tagovailoa, Matt Rule compared him to Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray apparently in his press conference. Um, so the kid's a good freaking ball player. All right, the kid's a good ball player, and I'm guessing he can he he can probably run. He's got a little bit of finesse like his brother. And Patrick and Kyler probably too, so we're gonna have to watch him scrambling and get away. And like I said, dude, we need to pressure the quarterback a lot more this game. Get in there, dude. Prince Will is on concussion protocol, so he hopefully he's back. I guess Malcolm Hartsog is questionable. I mean, two pretty big guys on the defense. We'd love to have at least one of them back for this game. Mm-hmm. Who would who would Malcolm Hartsog's Fucking backup be. Uh, well, isn't he playing corner? And I think Buford's playing corner, right? Because I think Malcolm... is a safety. Uh, I don't know, bro. I thought I that, that that's what coach was saying. Because now that Buford's in, because I thought Malcolm was going to move to safety at some point. Because I think that's his main thing. But they've been playing in both spots all year. So who, who really knows? I mean, the key to the defense here is, man, is. When you're playing a lot of these snaps, you're playing November Big Ten football. We need a lot of bodies rotating, man. You know, we this is this is this is you know you're not going to be playing a whole lot in terms of like the whole goddamn game. You're we're going to be rotating boys in and out. Yeah. Um, Jaden, your thoughts on Maryland? What do you think, pal? I think this game's going to be it's going to be a tough one. Maryland's pretty talk, good. Talk louder. Maryland's pretty good, wouldn't you say? I mean, when we started off the year, they went. What were they six and zero? They started. They they won their first four games, lost their last four. So they they started pretty dang hot. Yeah, they were on a roll, and they uh, yeah they they lost to Illinois and Northwestern, both teams we beat. Yep. And so, I think that that makes us a little more confident in how we can play against them. But when it comes down to like the end of the game, I feel like it, when we win. It's gonna feel a hell of a lot better because one, we are definitely in control of our destiny in the Big Ten in the West. If we win that game, when we win that game, I don't think we are because Iowa's only lost twice. No, we are, dude. Because then if we beat Iowa, then they have three losses just like us, and we won the tiebreaker. Oh yeah, I guess I just I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought about this, bud. When I that like it's like it's probably gonna fire the team up too. Now, they're still playing for something, man. They still need six. They still need to get a bowl game, and they still can make it to the Big Ten championship if they win out. So this season, it's not fucking butt fuck like it has been the rest the rest of the years. This is meaningful football in the month of November. 
I mean, that's still like, look at us, man. Like we lost, but we still have a chance to win the West boys. Like let's, let's rally the troops. Let's right. watch the film. Let's burn that shit when we're fucking done and correct our wrongs. Let's go out there and win some ball games. Right, dude. Put that last game behind us, man. We lost to a true freshman quarterback. Elante Brown threw a fucking pass on us. The refs totally fucked us over. They had money on the game. We all know it. It's all said and done. Next week, Maryland, motherfucker. Fuck those turtles so hard that I will run them over with my Jimmy truck. Yeah. What am I saying right now? I don't no, even I, fucking know, dude. I, th- I think you're right, dude. You're bleeding Husker red, and you're bleeding red in your shit corn, dude. That's all. I it just is. got fucking energy behind this fucking behind me right now, dude. And I'm yeah. pissed off for greatness. Put me out there, coach. Fucking dude, fly I, me out right now, dude. I I say this every week, man. Like I got four years of eligibility left. I would, I might, I might bulk up. It's bulking season, and then try out in the fall and enroll in Nebraska. Yeah, Darren, you got to stop doing those marathons, dude. Don't do not do those. Start doing sprints up the fucking Papio South Hill, dude. Dude, I was sprints. repping 315 bench yesterday, like, fucking eight times. I was like, if Coach saw me right now, I'd be on the field in a minute. Did you fucking really? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, games? Uh, games? Picks? Games. Picks. Picks, 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 picks. Um... <laughs> What, what real quick let's do our score prediction oh yep good call for, for uh, maryland sh- and um for maryland and um nebraska, nebraska. nebraska. <laughs> uh you go ahead first Jaden. yeah Jaden goes first he's our guest guest goes first we'll go 27 7 okay big red nebraska. of course yeah 27 7. You th- I, a Huskers can score 27 points. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the same. 27. Se- no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to do. Dude, the thing is, is that Nebraska might need to score a lot of points, but I'm just so. Now that I say that, the weather is going to be a huge factor and a huge help, I think, for Nebraska. Honestly, dude. I think that Tua Lee is going to struggle throwing the football. It's going to be cold. He The hot hands aren't going to be enough for him. Um, give me a 15-3 to three Nebraska victory. Wow, what an interesting score there, Ed. Uh, I'm going to go – so you're saying we're going to kick four field goals and get a safety? Uh, no, we could score a touchdown, kick two field goals, and have a safety, something. But we score 15 points. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go 24-21. It's going to come down to the fucking wire, and we're going to win this motherfucker. 24-21. Classic college football score. In Nebraska, first game of the week, Maryland minus one at Nebraska, over under 45 and a half. Um, Let's see here. I Both Jaden and I have Nebraska plus two and a half. Oh, you have plus two and a half. I see. I only have Nebraska at one right now. Okay. Um. What 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 bar sports book did you start to use? I'm I'm on I'm on fucking ESPN bet. Okay. I'll go back to ESPN, but I thought you were using Barstool for. Yeah, I switched while. over because their their um uh, numbers weren't coming up for a lot of games, so I started switching off of them. Okay. Well, next week we'll do that. Okay. So the boys, all the boys have Nebraska. Next game, Rutgers at Iowa. Iowa's favored by a point and a half, over under 28 and a half. You have Iowa over a point and a half. I there's it's I Rutgers wins this game. Yeah. Rutgers wins this football game. Plus two Rutgers is what I have for for my sports book. And Jaden so the uh over at 28 and a half. Over yeah, 28 and a half. I mean, I get it that they they didn't cover the last over, but come on. I mean, I think Rutgers is going to win. Next game, Michigan minus three and a half at Penn State over under 45, or excuse me, 44 and a half. Michigan, Penn State. Michigan, Penn State, baby. Huge game. This is going to be a good one. Um, I have Penn State minus four and a half. Penn State plus four and a half, excuse me. 
Jaden, what do you got? Yeah, Michigan. Michigan. Michigan what? <laughs> Michigan minus, minus four and a half. Yeah. I'm going to – wait, well, I, I got three and a half. See, now you're changing my fucking thing because I think it's three and a half. I'm keeping it at three and a half. I'm doing Michigan minus three and a half. Okay. Indiana at Illinois minus six and a half for Illinois over under 43 and a half. Both Jaden and I have the under at 43 and a half. Love it because I have the over. Life's too sh- short to bet the under boys over 43 and a half. Life's too short. What's that quote from, bud? I don't know. I think it's just an old folk tale. Life too <laughs> short to bet the under. Minnesota minus one at Purdue over under 46 and a half. My life is pretty short, I guess, because I bet the under for that too, and so did Jaden. Jesus Christ, fellas. I'm going to die young. I think Minnesota and – or excuse me. I'm going to bleep that out. I'm gonna, I am gonna. think Minnesota's dumb. <laughs> Purdue plus one. <laughs> Purdue plus one. Uh, Northwestern at Wisconsin, minus 11.5 for Wisconsin, over under 42.5. Hey, give me uh, the under 42 and a half. Three unders for Ed this, for Ed this penny. Jesus. And uh, Jaden has plus 10 and a half Northwestern. That's a good bet. That's what I have too. Jaden, we're like good minds think alike. All Michigan right. State plus 31 and a half at Ohio State over under 47 and a half. I want to go um, with Michigan State plus 31 and a half, but I'm going to go with the over of 47 and a half. I got the over as well, and Jaden does too. All three of us. Overs, boys. All right. Now we're going into out-of-conference play. Let's start with the SEC, the second-best conference in the nation. I have Alabama at Kentucky over 48-and-a-half. Okay. Nice. Um, I got minus one Tennessee over Missouri. It's going to be a close game, but Tennessee wins. Jaden, Old Miss, plus ten point five, plus ten and a half. Old Miss, right? Plus ten and a half. I like that, Jaden. Big Twelve. I got Texas Tech at KU. KU is a better team than people are giving them credit. I got them at minus three and a half. Wait, you said Texas? Yeah, dude. I know Kansas. I was surprised when I saw that. I was going to pick that one, but. Oklahoma State as well just get, get, got off a win, kind of beat the brakes off of Oklahoma. Uh, minus two and a half versus UCF. I'll take that any day, bud. Put that on a parlay, Aaron. I thought that one too, and I like that one too. And then Jaden, West Virginia plus 13 over Oklahoma. Or who was West Virginia playing? Oklahoma, yeah. Yep, they got Oklahoma. Okay. Pack 12. Uh, I took Utah at Washington. I just went with the over 54 and a half points, 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 points. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Jaden has that game as well. Jaden plus eight and a half. Utah. Nice. And then I have uh, my second favorite team of this next week, Arizona minus 11 versus Colorado. Um. Any team that's playing Colorado is my second favorite team of the week. Nice. Fuck Colorado. And rounding it out in the worst conference, ACC. Oh, and you know what, Eddie? I fucked up. I didn't choose an ACC game. I did two SEC games on accident. So I'll let you guys go first. All right. I got Miami, Florida State. Uh, I got the over at 50 and a half for that ball game. Jaden has that game too. Minus 14.5 FSU. FSU. And I hate to do this on the spot here, but I guess I have to because I'm an idiot. Um, what else is going on? There were some good games last that Jaden and I watched uh this past weekend. We watched fucking Washington. Oh. I'm gonna do NC State minus two and a half at Wake Forest. NC State, nice. Nice bet. Nice bet. Um, yeah, dude. Good games that we watched. What was Washington beat Oregon? We watched no, it Washington at, USC. Washington USC, I watched mean. It at Bubba Gump Shrimp. Yeah. Did Oregon you see had... fucking Caleb Williams cry at the end of the game? Oh, yeah. Balled his eyes out, bro. Holy shit, I've never you know, seen him 
football player cry like that in my life. You know what, you know what I said, Eddie? I said good things in good thing he, good thing he's in Hollywood because they got their next best actor right there in Caleb Williams. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. Alex Grinch, defensive coordinator, fired. Um, oh. what was the other good games that we saw? Um, there was a late night game. Was that Arizona beat UCLA? That was yep. a good game. Oh yeah, that was a good game. Um. Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma. It was a good weekend of college football besides Nebraska losing. Even that was kind of a good game. Good games this week, too. Michigan at Penn State. Miami at Florida State will be good. Utah at Washington. Uh, Surprisingly, Tennessee at Missouri. That'll be a great game. SC and Oregon. Yeah, I mean, Ole yeah, Miss at Georgia, man. There's a, I mean, it's it's the bulk of college football, man. It's November. We're playing, we're playing championship football, boys. Yep, folks. That was Husker Hype Radio episode twenty seven. I'm Eddie Rosenthal. That's Jaden freaking motherfucking Sidwell, <laughs> and Aaron Warsfold. We're gonna close you out. We'll see you next week. As always, Jaden, go big red, bleed red, shit corn. Go big go red, big baby. Red. <laughs>